Oh, oh Janet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes, it is. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because I did promise quite several people that I would be sending it to them. Okay, great. <laughs> that, let's get started. A little bit about me. If you're not familiar with me, I am Pam Most, owner of my online marketing company, Pam and Marketing. I've been creating websites for 14 years, participating in social media for seven years. I have an MBA in marketing and a bunch of geeky certificates. Today, like I said, we're going to try to run the gamut from, you know, haven't even used Twitter at all before to getting more out of it if you're already using it. So how to set up your Twitter account and profile, how to post, reply, retweet, follow others, and more, how to start building your own following, some tools will be helpful to you, and some tools that I would like you to, and I'll tell you why, and how to take your Twitter presence to the next level. As Janet said, you can submit your questions in the Q&A box. Um, please use this as opposed to the chat box because it's a little easier for her to manage um, the questions as they come in and summarize them for me. So let's jump right in to why Twitter. What is it? Do people use it? Do people actually use it, um, you know, for business purposes? Um, <laughs> the most common I always hear is, I don't need to know what you had for breakfast. There don't need to be on Twitter. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, there is a lot of chatter on Twitter, and there are a lot of people talking about breakfast. But there's also a lot of people talking about business and doing business. Um, people ask me, you know, is it really worth my time to be on Twitter for my business? And, and you know, I simply answer with my experience. And my experience, I have gotten quite a bit of business out of Twitter. I have gotten new clients. And then I've also gotten word-of-mouth clients from those new clients that I got from Twitter. So I can say I have gotten a significant amount of business from participating in Twitter for business. So that I use of how this works is that Twitter's like a cocktail party at a trade show. Not like any regular old cocktail party, you know, when using it for business. It's not like, you know, just going to a cocktail party and talking about all personal stuff, but like a cocktail party at a trade show. You're all there for business purpose. You probably, you know, just learned some new things about your industry or whatever, so you're talking about them, and you're looking to make new business connections. Um, but you're not there to just yourself and, and your company. You wouldn't march right up to someone at a cocktail party at a trade show and say, Steph, buy my services. You need to buy me. You know, you need to give me money. Um, you wouldn't do that in real life. So you don't want to do that on Twitter. But you want to make new connections with other business people in your target market and in your industry. And you also you want to demonstrate your expertise. And we'll talk about how to do that uh, shortly. Um, but, again, I just have to reiterate, it's not about, you know, some people, some companies use Twitter as a broadcasting channel to just blast their sales messages out there. And it doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. And some people say, I tried Twitter for my business and it didn't work. I tend to think that's probably the way they approached it because the people on Twitter that are there conversing, getting to know each other, they filter that out. They don't want to see that. They don't care that you have a 30% off promotion today. They don't even know who you are. They don't even know what you sell. Why would they care that you have, if you go come right out the gate with your promotions, it's not going to work. Does that change? Okay. Uh, we're talking about building relationships. So some concepts, like I said, it's just like networking in real life, um, building relationships and trust. It takes time. Again, in a networking event in real life, you wouldn't walk up to someone and say, I expect you to buy from me right now because now you know who I am. It, it doesn't work like that. It takes time. Um, so get to know followers on Twitter, just like you would get to know your product. In the business, in real life, in the business world, by conversing with them, um, and on, as much readily as you can. And at the time, you want to demonstrate your expertise and build the relationship by sharing useful information. So, based information that would be genuinely useful to your market, whether they buy from you or not. Um, if you share that information on Twitter, they will be appreciative of you bringing the new information to their attention. And and you will demonstrate, you know, especially it's not just the sharing of the content 
that demonstrates your expertise. It's the sharing of it and then the conversations that follow. So, for example, I often share an article about, you know, new developments in the SEO world, and, and people might reply to me and say, what does that mean exactly? And then I'll first with them. I'll say, well, in your case, it probably means blah, blah, blah. And that's where the real demonstration of expertise comes in, as the trust building by the conversion. For those of you who have not used Twitter at all, I'll try to breeze through this for those who have, but if you're not even on there yet, it's not that scary. You just go to Twitter.com and sign up. Name, email, password will get you started. That will ask you to, to, to create your username. So known as a handle on Twitter is limited to 20 characters. So that's kind of tricky when you're coming up with what your username is going to be. Try to make it easy to remember and related to your brand. Uh, mine, for example, is Pam and Marketing. That's my company, and that's also my um, username on other platforms like Facebook. My Facebook page is facebook.com slash Pam and Marketing, and that's not easy to remember. Um, number Things like numbers, dashes, and underscores make it harder to remember, um, and, and you know your URL will ultimately end up being twitter.com slash your username. So go for consistency and simplicity if you can. Um, like I said, my Facebook is facebook.com slash Marketing, so it's nice that my Twitter is also twitter.com slash Marketing. Um, but you might run into a situation where your desired username is already taken. In that case, like I said, try to avoid um, dashes or underscores or numbers. And if you can, add some other letters that make sense. Um, if you are not a nationwide company, you only operate in New Jersey, adding NJ to the end, like the example Green Vision NJ, or Inc. or Co. Um, to you know, because you're a company, so if your name is taken, you can add that at the end. And um, you know, anything that you can do to avoid the number. If you have to go to the number, you have to go to the number, or a dash or an underscore. But it's just going to make it harder for people to remember if. You know, because sometimes it comes up in conversation. What's your name on Twitter? And tell somebody, you know, green underscore vision is going to be more confusing because they might use dash instead of underscore and so on. Try to uh, stick with all letters and simple if you can. All right, the next thing you're going to have to do is fill out your profile. First and foremost, upload a photo. So over there, upload anything at first that represents your brand. Just don't leave the egg there. Um, Spam and, and robots, software that use Twitter to spam people, they don't leave the egg, which is the default picture that Twitter puts up when you haven't put a picture up yet. Um, it looks unprofessional. People might think you're spam. Just first thing, just get the egg and put a real picture there. Um, there's some debate about you know, whether your picture should be either logo or your picture, like a picture of you, a headshot. Um, I think it, you know, there's different situations. An enormous corporation is not going to use one person's headshot uh, to represent the brand, but a smart company might want to. Like for me, I actually combined the both. I put my logo in the background and I put my face on top of that so that there's a little bit of branding and there's, a, and there's the personal feel of me because Twitter, like I said, is about conversing and building relationships and people tend to feel sometimes a lot about conversing with a logo. Because when you in their stream, you're good, they're going to see your profile picture. There's all sorts of people that, you know, there's there's different camps of thought with that. But at first, don't think it. Just get anything up there. And no eggs. <laughs> and next, your location, um, because you can search by location on Twitter. So you want, you know, especially if you operate regionally, you want your location on there so that people, can find you according to your location. Um, also, add a website and fill out your bio, which is just a short uh, description of your company. Uh, remember in the bio, though, to try to make it, try to say something about what makes you different. Um, you know, let's say you're a photographer and you're filling out your bio, and you say, naturally, you might want to say, I'm a photographer based in New Jersey. Um, try to add a little more to that. There's a lot of photographers in New Jersey, so you know, it's limited space, but try to make yourself sound different. You know, I am 
photographer specializing in, you know, commercial show photography or whatever, you know, you don't have to get too specific, but the point is to differentiate yourself from all the other people in your company and your companies in your field. And it's also a bit of thing that people might debate, but I say that the next thing that Twitter steps you through when you're logging, when you're creating your account is it offers you the option to connect to Facebook. I say do not do that. Um, I say it because tweets on Facebook look weird. And to me, weird is unprofessional. Um, they're totally different platforms. They have two totally different ways of communicating. Twitter has things like tags and handles and, you know, RT standing for retweet, all of these things that if you're not a Twitter user, you don't know what they are. Even if you are a Twitter user, to see them on Facebook looks just strange. Um, you know, Facebook is also known as a picture economy. You, it's been proven that users prefer visuals on Facebook versus text. So if you connect your tweets to your Facebook page, your Facebook page is going to end up looking like this. And it's just, it's I think it's not desirable. Um, so I, I would suggest not doing that. Uh, moving on to five. Actually, let me just ask you, Janet, real quick. Is there any, did you have any questions about setting out the profile? Uh, no, but I do just want to um, echo what you just said about the uh, Facebook, um, because I know personally, um, I all the hashtags and everything are just garbage to me, and um, it just gets very confusing. So I uh, wholeheartedly agree with you on that, that one. Great, great. Thanks for that. So now that you're signed up, um, you're there by yourself at first. You have no followers. You're not following anyone. So the first thing you want to do is start following other companies, in this case, um, or individuals if your targets are individuals. Um, but assuming a business-to-business type of situation, you want to search for companies that you know, like, or are affiliated with, or just ones that find in your industry, um, you can type into the top. Uh, the, when you log into Twitter, in the top there's a search box. You can type the company name or part of the company's name. For example, here I use Red Cross in the search box, and then it will give you results. And you can either click on the company name to find more information about them, or you can just click the follow button right there in the search results. Another thing you can do instead of searching by company name is to just search by keywords. So, you know, if your company provides QuickBooks consulting and you want to have the latest and greatest information about QuickBooks in your Twitter stream, you might want to follow uh, some rep accounts related to QuickBooks. So you can just type in QuickBooks in the top. And then you do have to, the, by default, it shows you tweets as the first search result. So just click on people on the left, and then it, then it will show you people you can follow or companies you can follow related to that topic. So in this case, QuickBooks brought up Intuit, which is the company that owns the software. And um, and apparently they also have an official QuickBooks account. A little blue check mark, check mark there means that it's an, um, I forget them off the top of my head, but it's, it's an authorized account. It's, um, you know, proven to be, they've gone through a verification, verified, I think is the word I'm looking for. They've gone through a verification process to verify that they are who they say they are. Um, Twitter does not offer that to, to anyone, though. So the absence of that blue check mark does not mean it's definitely not authentic. Um, it just may require a little more investigation on your part. So if you're not sure if that's the real Intuit, you would click on the name and then look at You can get an impression by what they're sending out, whether they're a spare who's faking to be Intuit or whether they're real. Pam? To um, clarify what you were just saying, so if I wanted to find this QuickBooks thing, I go first and click on people and then type in, or do you type it in and then click on people? I type in and then click on people. Um, okay. I might be able to discover it another way. Actually, 
myself, um, and we'll talk about this when we get to the tools, I use a, a term management tool called Sprout Social um, to do my searching, so I don't often do my searching right on the Twitter website here. Um, there may be other paths to get to that result that I'm not aware of at the moment because I don't often use the Twitter website, but uh, I know is, is, is one way to get to it is to put the keyword in search and then click on people. Okay. Great. Thanks. All right. So who follow after that? So you've run out of ideas. You've, you've searched for companies you thought of. You've searched for keywords. Next, um, you, one thing I suggest is watch when you when you follow someone, you will then get updates from them in your stream. But you see, in your you know stream is when you first log into Twitter. It's like the news feed in Facebook. It's all the activity going on with the people that you're connected with. So if you watch that stream for conversations, so you know, you're following QuickBooks and you just saw that QuickBooks conversed with into it, you know, if you hadn't seen into it before, then you might want to click on into it and be like, you know what, I think I want to follow them too. So kind of the activity amongst your little community that started to build and look for people that in those conversations that you're not already following and follow them to expand your community. Um, you can also go to websites of, you know, your prospects or your companies in your target market and look for a Twitter icon. Uh, so if you're your couple big jobs right now, you want to go to those, you know, you know a cl potential client's website and see if they have a Twitter icon and follow them on Twitter. Use Twitter's Find Friends and similar to tool. Find Friends tool is where you can connect or upload your contacts from your email, and it will tell you which of your existing email contacts are on Twitter and where to find them on Twitter. And so a similar to tools, which is this box here. If you're looking at someone's profile, like when I was looking at the profile of QuickBooks, there's this box on the left that says similar to books. It's the people similar um, based upon information in their bio or topics that they tweet about that have been found by Twitter's algorithm to be similar to QuickBooks and might be people that I want to follow as well. Whether or not to follow someone, I like I tend to prefer people who will be conversational with me. Uh, unless it's just a news outlet and I'm following them simply to get the latest news on a topic. Other than that, I mean, you know, go to a cocktail party and stand in the corner and not talk to anyone. Um, if you're especially a business one where your purpose is to make new connections. Um, similarly, you wouldn't walk up to a person who's standing in the corner with their back to you your face in the corner and refusing to talk to anyone. Um, you know, you're obviously not going to get a conversation out of that person, so you would skip them. In these, in these two examples shown in the slides, Kevin there seems to never, and I could have shown more tweets here, but kept it at this uh, limit five so that you could see without it getting too small. But the whole stream, you know, last 30 or so tweets, none of them had any conversation in them. So me, he's the guy, you know, standing in the corner talking to himself and is obviously not going to converse with anyone. Versus Stacy on the right there has some replies in her stream. Um, it's not really replies, but that's okay. It just shows that she is willing to talk. So I'd much rather follow Stacy than Kevin. Does that make sense, Janet? Um, and and. I'm trusting that you're going to get into this more because um, I was looking at it, it kind of get angst because <laughs> um, I don't know what that means by having a conversation with somebody. Okay, we are going to dive into that a little bit more. So okay. Hopefully I'll get clearer soon. Uh, just think to, you know, focus following at the moment. That's just a visual cue. That you can use to know that someone, they have the username in the front, that's their reply. So that's Lou, that someone's talking versus just broadcasting. Yeah. Okay, I said, after you follow them, their tweets show up in your stream and known as feed. Next, you want to send it to and 
this is this is not part of a conversation. This is just something you want to share on Twitter. But you want to make it a first conversation in most cases, unless you're simply sharing a, a news article. But whenever possible, add a question at the end so that you can start a conversation. So simplest example here. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today we're working on an exciting new product. What are you up to? And hopefully people will reply and say what they're up to. Your tweets will be seen by your followers. It will land in their stream. So I showed before, when you log in and you have your stream there, that's all people that you're following. When your followers log in, you show up in their stream. So your good morning tweet there would show up in their stream when they log in. So that will be seen by, so that's public. It will be seen by your followers and or anyone who visits your page. Everything on Twitter is public, but there are some situations where certain people see certain things and other people don't, um, mostly to do with replies, which we'll go over. So, like I said, replies. Um, if you reply to a tweet, so you tweet in your feed, it's interesting, you have something to say, you click the hover over the tweet, click the reply button. Leave that handle or username in the front and for it to be a reply. I like sending a text message. You know, when you send a text message on your phone, you got to leave the phone number in there in order for the text message to get to the person. Um, so you leave the handle in front, and then you type what you're going to say. There is a 140-character limit, so it do, and the username does take up some of those characters. So it's going to, you know, you're going to be limited in, in how much you can say, um, but just try to be concise. I mean, and it doesn't have to be a lot of dialogue, you know, in the case, I'm just saying I agree. And that's, you know, introducing myself to this person. I actually haven't tweeted with this person yet. Um, I'm trying to start a conversation. Um, I'm at a, a question to I agree, and then what do you think of blah, blah, blah. Um, in this case, a simple way, you know, just reply on one um, to start a conversation. You just hover. Click reply, leave the username, and, and that symbol in the front um, is required as well because if you just type the username, Twitter doesn't know that that's a person versus just a word. Like the GREE doesn't have an at symbol in front, so that's how Twitter knows whether it is sending this to someone or not. Um, Janet? It does. Right. Um, like I said, hover over a tweet, click reply, type response after the username. So who's the user reply? The user you replied to will get a notification that replied to them. Um, but and every user whose usernames, you know, with the at symbol in front, are included also receive a notification. So you can reply more than one person at a time. Um, and following the both of you, so let's say just in that case before where it was me and that other guy, anyone following the both of us? Leave the reply in their stream, in their feed. But otherwise, regular followers who aren't following the both of you will not see your replies. Um, it's it's a bit more of a a bit more of a private conversation. I emphasize a bit because all tweets are always public. So if someone went to your profile and looked at all of your tweets, they would see the replies there it's automatically in their feed. Um, Okay, so if you want to know who replied to you and receive other notifications, you go to the Connect tab after logging in, and there you'll see replies you've received. So there's a reply I received recently, and it starts my username. That's how Twitter knew to notify me. Um, and in this case, she just winked at me, kind of an agreement of what I said. And the option beneath it there, if I forget, what I said, because, you know, sometimes people reply to you the next morning or something, and I don't remember what I said. I click on View Conversation, and it will show me the tweet that she replied to. So I remember what I said. Um, yes. Just to go over what you were saying before, um, and we have a question. Um, so can others see who has tweeted you along with all of their comments? Others see who have tweeted you. 
Um, okay, I think I know what you mean. So, so like in this case, Bridget tweeted to me, um, do my followers see tweet to me and what said? Exactly. Um, the simple answer would be no, unless they also follow her. Because if they follow the both of us, they will see our conversation. They will see uh-huh. to each other in their stream. Um, but if they don't follow, so Jan, I'll use you as an example. Mm-hmm. If you follow me, but not Bridget. Yeah. Bridget applies to me, like in the example there. You would not see that unless you happen to go to Bridget's profile because all, all tweets are available on a person's profile. If I'm doing a, a search on Bridget and um, it ends up with her profile and it shows everything that she said to anybody. Correct. In that case, you could see that she with me, but otherwise it won't show up in your feed unless, like I said, you are following the both of us. Is there any way, to, and you may be talking about this, is there any way to make it like a private conversation? Yeah, yes, actually, um, that is something I didn't do a slide on, but certainly uh, it's called direct messages, and what I'll do is I'll flip off the slides um, and go over to the live browser in a minute and uh, or when we're done with the and I'll show okay. you that. Okay. Um, so by the way, it's, 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 it's download this slide deck at that link. It's not live just yet, uh, but it will be shortly after the presentation. Okay. Um, so that's replying, but yes, it um replies somewhat public but have these funny little things about when they show up and when they don't. Um, if you want to have a truly private conversation, don't use replies. Direct message which we'll go over. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I need to be stuck here. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, so as opposed to a reply, there's also a mention. Mentions when your username appears somewhere in the tweet. Um, that does get shown to your followers. And if this is getting confusing, I'll come back to it in a minute because I know I have another slide on that. Replies for a moment. You will reply to the replies that you get. You know, certainly don't want to ignore somebody when they say something to you. Um, so to uh, re- to reply to a reply <laughs> in the tab, you'll see your replies. Hover over one of the replies and click reply. And again, leave the name in there um, so that Twitter knows who to send it to, and type your response. So in my case, I. You know, shoot me, and I replied, and I said, I knew you'd agree with me on that, that one. And it, when you click reply, it conveniently brings up the previous tweets in the conversation and so that you can remember what you were talking about. So reply all, just like an email. If you click, if you, by, by default, if multiple people are in the conversation or in the tweet, like in this case, there's Carol, Plaza Bonita, me, and, and Fab Social. We're all in this tweet. So when I clicked reply, it added all of those usernames as if I was replying to multiple people mail at once. Um, if for any reason I did not want to go to Carol, Plaza Bonita, and Fab Social, if I just wanted to apply to the reply to the original share, um, then I would delete those other usernames and leave just Riggs construction in there. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so by default, all the parties are included. Delete any names you don't want to include. So, I before about mention, sorry, that got kind of out of order. Um, on the Connect tab, one of the other things that's shown to you is mention. A mention is when. Uh, someone includes your username somewhere in the handle, in the in the <laughs> tweet. Sorry, I'm getting my own jargon confused. Um, the, your username, also this handle, is included somewhere in the tweet, not just in the front. Um, if it was in the front, it would be a reply, and you would get a notification that you were replied directly to. But, but if it's elsewhere, Twitter will still notify you that you've been mentioned. Um, so in this case, you know, someone uh, Carol, helped me advertise this webinar here. Um, she saw my tweet on it, and she kind of made her own tweet about it for me. 
Company, the Tracy's for Business today in the details and the link to register. And then she put via because she got the information from me and my handle. So I had a notification of that. And that seen by all of Carol's followers versus if Carol had put my uh, in the front, my in the front, that would reply that is not seen by all of her followers. So, be, you know, if the handle comes up anywhere other than the very, very front, your followers will see it. Guaranteed. If the handle is in the front, your followers will only see it if they follow the view or to your profile. And it's just like your replies are found under the Connect tab. What is retweet? And again, I'm trying to. I'm going to try to go through this part a little quickly. If anyone is still confused, we'll definitely come back to any of this. Um, I know it is confusing if you haven't used Twitter before, but for those of us who have used Twitter before, I want to go through this if possible. So what is a retweet? A retweet is when someone else reshares your tweet. So it's like Facebook, you can reshare something that you like and you want to show to your friends. You can reshare a tweet, and it's called a retweet. Um, people retweet, they retweet, they retweet to retweet distribute useful info to followers, and it's also a way of saying, I agree. Since you're sitting on characters, um, some people just hit the retweet button as a way of saying, I agree with this. And your tweets are all shown in the Connect tab. Um, and here, there, there's been a change in Twitter over the years. Retweet, also known as the old style retweet, used to simply start with RT. Um, like the widget one there on the left, and some tools, and tools that people use to tweet from, still read things in the old style retweet um, versus the style which is shown like Chris Windley there. Um, Twitter simply notifies you that, that Chris retweeted you. Um, so, but your one is a retweet. So if you see RT in the beginning of a tweet that you made um, by someone else, that's a retweet or the Twitter new style one is a retweet as well. And as with talking with people in person, remember reply to retweets as well as your replies and mentions with at least a thank you. Um, you know, you wouldn't, anyone walked up to you and heard, said, oh, I overheard your conversation and I agree with what you're saying. You wouldn't just stare at them and not say anything to reply. You would say, at least say, oh, thank you. Okay. Reply to all mentions and retweets with at least a thank you. It's also an opportunity to start more of a conversation if you have something else you can say or ask them. Okay, hashtags. Hashtag is simply a word or words with no spaces with number sign in front of them, i.e. QuickBooks with the number sign in front of it. Putting it in front of a word makes it clickable, makes it hyperlinked, so that when when you click on a word, you see all conversations on Twitter going on at the moment with that word. So why would you use hashtags? You can search for hashtag in the search box and then use those results to find relevant people to follow. So if I typed in hashtag QuickBooks in the search, I'd find all sorts of people talking about QuickBooks, and that might help me find some new followers. So use that to jump in on conversations or start conversations. You know, we keep saying you're supposed to be on conversing. Well, how do I find people talking about what I want to talk about? That's how you can search by keyword by a hashtag. You can all add hashtags to your tweets. I say simply, I'll explain why in a moment. Add hashtags to your tweets to help relevant people find you. So if you're sharing an article about the newest feature that was just released in QuickBooks, you hashtag the word QuickBooks because other people searching on the hashtag, who have clicked on the hashtag QuickBooks, will see your tweet. And if they didn't know who you were before, they will know. Only because, you know, the people abuse every platform that's out there. There's spammers on Facebook. There's spammers on every social network. So there's spammers on Twitter. And people use many, many, many hashtags in one tweet. And if you do that, you, because you know, they're trying to get as much exposure as possible, but if you do too many, you might look like a spammer. So one, per tweet, um, if you just treat those words into a hashtag by adding the number sign in front, you increase your 
expert exposure on that topic. Can I go back to jumping in? in? So um, according to Twitter um, etiquette, that's not considered rude to jump in somebody else's conversation? Good question. Um, no, it really isn't. I mean, because it's really like a big uh, group pub text messaging or pub public group chat room. Um, you know, like like a, the example I was using, the, the business cocktail party, you know, all there for the purpose of finding the people to talk to. So, you know, people are people are dying for attention on Twitter. They want to expand their networks. They want to converse with a lot of people. I mean, if they're doing it right. right. So, no, it's not a it's not rude to jump in on on someone else's conversation. It's actually kind of expected and encouraged. Great. Thanks. So that looked like when I clicked on the hashtag this is what came up. This is the first three of many, many, many tweets that came up. Um, but it really just pulls up for you any uh, tweets that have hashtag in it. And it's also a way to keep on exploring. So now I see another hashtag in that second tweet there that says Certified Pro Advisor. That I can click on that right there. You'll see it's a slightly different color. I can click on that and then get all the tweets that say Certified Pro Advisor and get more specific information about that. Build your following. Now, you know, we talked a lot of ways about finding people for you to follow, but you want people to follow you too. So a lot of people that you follow will follow you back, but not all of them will. So you build your following in other ways too. You want to put out your new Twitter account on your other social media platforms, you know, on your Facebook or your Google Plus or your Pinterest. You want to, you know, put up something that says, you know, find us on Twitter. Uh, you include a link on your business cards and in your email signatures or else you can think of And the best way, though, again, to get back around to the point I keep drilling home, converse, converse, converse. The more people you talk to, the more people will follow you. Um, because once you do start following a good amount of people and you apply to someone and you have to be following, you know, the same two people in a conversation, um, but one of them is not following you back. And, you know, when you get in, the point is when you get in these group conversations, the people that are part of the conversations that are not yet following you might decide to follow you based on the great conversation that you're having. And that's really the best way to get more followers. Okay, going to breeze through this part too because I want to make the most of the queue in time. Tool you can use to manage your Twitter presence. TweetDeck is a popular one recently purchased by Twitter. There's also Hootsuite is the second popular one. And Sprout Social is my favorite. It's it's popular. It's not one of the, the most popular ones, but I find the features to be just great compared to the other two. However, Sprout Social is paid. It's, their plans start at $9 a month, so it's much of an investment. It's paid as opposed to TweetDeck and Hootsuite, which are free. Although Hootsuite does have a paid option for some features. On mobile, if you have Android, TweetCaster is good. Uh, Plume is my favorite for Android, though. Um, the native Twitter app, like just the regular old Twitter app on both Android and iPhone is pretty good. Um, my iPhone friends tell me that they like Echo. I don't know how to press that. But, uh, and Hootsuite is available as a mobile app on both platforms as well. Uh, it refers to, you know, you end up having, you know, if you follow people at first when you're poking around Twitter and you don't really know what you're doing, you might accidentally follow a spammer or you might accidentally follow a whole bunch of accounts that don't converse back or, or something, some cleanup tools that let you kind of go through in big chunks and get rid of those kind of things. Um, so Manage Flitter and Twit Cleaner are two tools to use for that. Follower investigation, like finding out more information about followers, there's this one tool that is called Dove Follow. So if you want to know if one – so let's say, you know, I follow Carol, who I showed before, and I'm curious if Janet already follows Carol. So I put in the does follow website, Janet's handle and Carol's handle, and tell me if they follow each other. If not, then, you know, as as you would with networking in real life, if you think those are two people that would be a good connection for each other, I might facilitate an introduction. But whether one person is following another person already. Follower check. If you're curious about an account, um, like I was saying before, you know, if it doesn't have that certified blue box and you're wondering if this is real 
QuickBooks or not or an imposter, um, you can use the fake follower check. You just Google that fake follower check. It's by a company called Status People. It'll let you know how many fake followers an account has. Um, so that's a good way to spot, you know, robots versus real accounts. Um, entering for keywords, you know, if if there's a certain thing, it's a tool called Twilert. It will send you email alerts based upon certain key phrases that you set up alerts for on Twitter. And it does it sparingly for more specific things because, you know, if you put in QuickBooks and made a Twilert alert for that, I mean, there's tens of thousands of tweets about QuickBooks every so you're going to get inundated. But if you, you know a good one might be, and this is what I do, uh, your company name with with spaces. Because if someone puts in your handle, the at symbol, you know, if someone put in Pam and Marketing with the at symbol in front, Twitter will notify me. But if someone types out the th separately, Pam and Marketing, Twitter's not going to notify me of that. So that's Twilight to have set up an um, email alert if someone is talking about my company without using my handle. So to avoid, um, I suggest you do not use TrueTwit validation. That is a tool that, that um, claims to authenticate your followers so that you don't get robots following you. What it does is it sends a direct message, an automated private message to everyone who tries to follow you and makes them go through this tedious uh, verification procedure. It's just I think um, if someone wants to follow you on a public platform and you make them jump through hoops in order to do so, it's like making someone jump through hoops to have you hand them their business, your business card. Like, you wouldn't do that. You would just hand them their business card. So I say just let people follow you and avoid true to it validation. Um, I also suggest not, if you run this, um, paper.li is a way that you can curate tweets. Um, on a certain topic and create kind of like a daily newspaper for yourself, that's fine for yourself, but they have an option to auto-tweet your, actually I think it's by default, it auto-tweets your daily paper, and it's just really annoying um, because it automatically mentions people that are in your paper and it notifies them, um, and then they might respond to you, but you realize you tweeted them because it was auto-tweeted, and it's just odd and awkward and spammy looking. We'll see you sparingly. Um, FF Helper, FF, the hashtag FF, stands for Follow Friday, which is a thing on Twitter where people recommend other people to follow. Nothing with it, but it, people have gotten out of hand with it. And FF Helper is a tool that suggests people that you might want to give an FF recommendation to, a Follow Friday recommendation, um, but it suggests them en masse. So, you know, it's just a Friday recommendation is so much more genuine when you do it one at a time. Uh, so, you know, if I wanted to recommend that you follow Janet, FF might suggest that I give Janet as well as, you know, six other people at the same time and F all in one tweet. I, it kind of becomes span meaningless when you do it in mass automation fashion like that. I'd much rather put tag FF, meaning Follow Friday, handle, and then a reason, like follow Janet because she is such an expert on X, Y, Z, um, and leave, leave it one recommendation per tweet. It's so much more genuine. But you can use FF Help with you ideas for who to do that for. Um, there's another one to use. Apparently it, it curates, you join a tribe, and people link their blogs to the tribe, and it let you auto-tweet um, all the new articles from the people in your tribe. It's a great way to, you know, curate content for thought leadership. You know, if you want to become the Twitter's, you know, most recognized expert on QuickBooks, you want to create a QuickBooks tribe on Triber that links a bunch of QuickBooks blogs together um, and use that to auto-tweet things. But I say use sparingly because people who fill their entire feed with auto-tweets from Triber end up looking like your account looks like a robot. It looks like you're not really there. Um, you're you know, replies get buried in all that automation, and it just, you know, can be detrimental to your relationship building on Twitter. And when do you spend at least who unfollowed me? Um, if you want who left you for whatever reason on Twitter, I personally don't care who chooses to unfollow me. If they don't want to follow me anymore, okay, that's fine. But some people use this tool to find out who unfollowed them, and fine, but I, the part, again, that I don't like is the automation part. 
um, there's a thing on who unfollowed me, which will automatically tweet who followed you today, and I just and it will notify the people that unfollowed you. And it's very, I don't know, I think it's creepy and weird. If I unfollow someone and then I get a tweet from unfollowed me saying, I know you unfollowed me, um, I just think that's creepy and rude and weird. So that's for the two avoiding tools to use sparingly. All right, quickly, so we can make the most of Q&A time. Since we have 10 minutes left, take it to the next level. Um, if you've been on Twitter and, and you have you want to get more out of it, if you haven't participated in a tweet chat, I highly recommend you do so. A tweet chat is a chat that takes place using a specific hashtag, and it takes place at a certain time and a certain day of the week, the same time, you know, every day that week or whatever, and it's about a topic, and it's structured. They ask, you know, five or six questions, and you give five or six answers amongst the people in the tweet chat, but it's a very focused discussion. It's a great way to find people in your area or area of interest or target market that are there on conversing Twitter, uh, they are conversing on Twitter in a meaningful way. Um, next level that, you can start and manage your own tweet chat. Uh, I wouldn't suggest doing that until you have a really strong following on Twitter, uh, because it's kind of hard to host a tweet chat and have no one show up. It's like hosting a party and no one show up. But if you feel like you've got a good, strong following enough to start and manage your own tweet chat, make up your hashtag, pick your time of the day and the day of the week, and have somebody submit questions on a topic, different topic each week and be the leader of the tweet chat. It's a good way to have a leadership established. Um, you can also hold Twitter contests, again, around certain hashtags. Tweet this to win. Uh, trade show or other live event tweeting, and watching your metrics. Um, another reason I love Sprout Social is the reporting is great. Like it tells you your engagement ratio, which you will continuously improve. Real engagement ratio is simply the number of reply tweets that you send out divided by the number of non-reply tweets. So it's a, it's a ratio of conversation to broadcasting. You want it to be as high as possible, and you can work on um, continuously improving that by watching your metrics. So, a little longer than I wanted it to, so let's get right to Q&A so I can make sure to answer as many questions as possible. Um, no problem. Um, where do you access the Twitter logo to download and to use in your email and other social media sites? Uh, question. I am sure that it is officially on Twitter somewhere. Um, I Google it <laughs> if I need it. I just Google Twitter logo and go to Google Images and grab one. Quite readily available, so you can okay. Just save. Okay. Excellent. Um, another question: Can you block someone from sending tweets to you? Yes, absolutely. Um, and you do want to do that if someone is sending you spam. You can put their profile and this little. You can see my screen, right? Yep. Uh, you can, you know, use a little drop down by the people icon there and block them. Or you can report them for spam. Actually, that also blocks them, if I remember right. Uh, but yes, you absolutely can and should if someone is pinging you with spam. You can block them. And get to the uh, private messaging, which I didn't include right. a slide on, on Facebook, uh, sorry, on Twitter, is um, actually I have to go to the full profile to do it. Again, I don't use Twitter website as much as I use the other tool. Um, Want to? Where is it here? There's a direct message. And so of that, that people icon, if you send a direct message, this is a. Oh, you have to click new message and the person's handle. Um, so let me use your company, Janet. It's above and beyond C3, and this is a private tweet. Direct messages are private between the two parties. They have this 140 character limit. So it's not the easiest method to have a private conversation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but that a direct message is private. Okay. Cool. Um, how often do you recommend tweeting in a given business day? A good question. Um, Twitter is very fast-paced. There's millions of tweets. Hundred, I think it, I heard it was a hundred million tweets per day, and it's probably even more than that now. Um, so you do have to tweet a lot to get noticed. However, you know, like with everything else, the balance is best. You want to tweet every minute of the day. Um, you want to tweet a couple of times per day, minimum. Um, 
you know, if you have the resources to send out a couple of tweets per hour, that would be great. But again, it depends on your size of your following, though. It scales up accordingly because if you have 10 followers and you tweet, you know, and it depends on how many followers or followers follow, too. Uh, but basically just, you know, when you have a smaller presence, a few times it might suffice. But when you're ramping up your presence and you're getting bigger and bigger, you're going to have to tweet more accordingly. Um, mm-hmm. But the chats, again, are a good opportunity to, you know, get tweeting activity there and get noticed while only, you know, w- without having to sit there and watch the thing all day. Mm-hmm. You just go an hour, you participate heavily for that hour, and then, you know, go on a little, well, maybe one more time that day. Mm. No answer. There's no, you know, guide or anything. Um, but you do definitely want to ramp up your involvement as you're following ramp- ramps up. Um, so I had one person say that they actually had been reported as spam because the topic that they were, um, evidently the topic that they were talking about um to somebody is that if you are reported as spam, how do you get notified? Uh, very good question. I don't think so, or I maybe I, I've been fortunate enough to never have been reported as spam because I've never received I'm such notice. I'm that yes, you are. <laughs> that you are uh, Sorry, what was that? You are notified by tw- that you have been. Spam. I don't know if you're notified about. I don't think you're notified about each individual. Spam report. No, but just that you've been notified. But been indicated. I mean, if if Twitter receives enough spam reports about you, then Twitter will shut you down. They'll definitely notify you at that level. So I don't know if you receive notification of each individual spam report. If you receive enough spam reports in total, Twitter will shut you down, and then you're obviously going to get a notification about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question for you. How would you find a specific industry group? That's a good question. Um, by keywords, hashtags, um, and key, and as you look in through those, those keywords and hashtag results, I look for um, hash that have the word chat in them. So let's see if I can do a live example. So I want to find people who are you know heavily involved in Pinterest. Uh, I would search hashtag Pinterest, and then all the tweets that have that hashtag in it up here, and what I would keep an eye out for is if there's anything that looks like a tweet chat, which I don't know if I'm going to have this happen in the live example here, but I do happen to know that one day when I was searching on this hashtag, I saw another hashtag in there that said pin chat. I clicked on pin chat and found out that there's a weekly tweet based on Pinterest. I'm not seeing it right here in the live example, but... Um, that's the kind of thing to keep an eye out for, to find groups of people. Um, I, I, you can kind of create your own groups. If you find that, you know, you're searching and you on a hashtag and you constantly see, let's say I constantly see Jeff Bullis and Ted, I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> let's say I constantly see them tweeting about Pinterest. So you can add them to a list. Um, this is another way to take your Twitter presence to the next level. Um, you can add... Jeff, test, create a list about Pinterest. You can, this can be public for anyone to see or private. This one I'll do private because I'm just testing and it's not really this here. Um, and then you choose which list of yours you want to include him on. So I'm going to do Jeff and I'm going to do Ted. And by doing this, I'm kind of creating my own group of people that are about Pinterest. And then what you can do is go view your list. Um, if you go to the Me tab, show you your list that you've made. Pinterest list. Now it will show me all the tweets, whether you use the Pinterest hashtag or not. It will show me all the tweets from those people that are on the list. Right now it's only two people. But if you can create your own pretty tight-knit groups using lists. And that's if you want to do a kind of many different areas of thought leadership on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Last question for you. Um, you mentioned something about um, contests. How do you do contests? Okay. 
So a contest would be, you know, uh, usually there has to be some cross-platform advertisement of the contest, but you can also just tweet about it. You want to say, you know, at, you can have it at a specific date and time um, or, or from a specific date and time to a specific date and time. So let's say, you know, for for this for the week of 12-17, um, you know, we're going to wave, I don't know, an iPad, um, tweet hashtag, uh, you know, Pam and iPad to win. So you know, I might say, so I'm going to compose a tweet. I'm going to say this week. You're giving away an iPad tweet break with hashtag Pam and iPad to win. And then you can eye on that hashtag by reaching forward or clicking on it and watching all the tweets that come in, and you can randomly select a way. You can say the person who tweets the hashtag the most, that's a little harder to keep track of. But, you know, if you're only having a two-hour-long contest, that might be easier to keep track of. Then, you know, that's basically how you can create your own Twitter contest. Well, we're out of time. Um, I just want to take the time now to thank everyone for participating. Um, Pam, for doing yet another great presentation. Pam, when will that um, deck be available for people to download? A few minutes after the presentation. Give me, give me 30 minutes to be safe, Okay. and I'll upload it, and it'll be available at that, that link, bit.ly slash tweet a deck, and it is case sensitive. Okay, great. Um, and Pam, I think you had a, a special offer that you wanted to tell people about today? I do. Um, I often give these webinars that give very generic information about something, but for people who want to learn how to apply these concepts to their specific business and their specific case and talk about their specific goals and how to make them happen. And I do give private consultations and I offer them at a lower cost to webinar attendees than normal. So um, if you would like to do a one-hour private consultation with me and get actionable steps for your own business, uh, there's the discounted order link. You do have to sign up through that link in order to get the discounted price, but you can sign up there. I will touch base with you to schedule the time for our private consultation. Excellent. And um, for those of you out there who need some assistance, I can tell you that we use PAM uh, here at Above and Beyond, and uh, it would be a great investment for you and for your company. Um, and just to tell a little bit more about Above and Beyond, for those of you who don't know, we are a shared office facility in Montclair, New Jersey, and now opening up in Sparta, New Jersey as well. And we do virtual administrative support. So for those of you who are thinking, oh, I'd love to do all this, but I don't have time to do all this tweeting, I don't have time to do any social media things, that's something that we do here at Above and Beyond. So Pam does the, the strategy, and we can help you with the implementation. And for being a participant today, we will offer you four hours of administrative uh, support for the price of two hours. Um, price varies depending on what the, the tech is, um, but if you email me, I'd be glad to go over it with you. Um, my email is Janet, J-A-N-E-T, at virtualofficestaff.com. Again, that's Janet at virtualofficestaff.com. Thank you again for participating with us. Thank you, Pam, for doing this. The um, presentation will be available in about a half an hour, and this has been recorded, so we will get you um, access to the recording as well. And go to the Above and Beyond website at virtualofficestaff.com to learn more information about us and, and future webinar events. See you on the next one.